Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's Quinton here and welcome to tutorial number 17. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys how to work with background images in CSS. So this is kind of somewhat a little bit related to the box model. And uh, I thought before we move on from the box model, I might as well just show you guys this as well. Uh, so right now I have um, a paragraph in my browser. This is the same paragraph that we've had for the past couple tutorials, just a paragraph that says style me. Um, and I have a red border around it. So to take a look at the HTML, it's literally just that paragraph. Uh, obviously I've linked to my external style sheet and my external style sheet has uh, some rules to change the font, uh, the border, and obviously add a little bit of padding um, for this little space over here, which, you know, if you followed the previous tutorial, you know, we've already talked about that. Uh, right, so now that we've done padding and border and margin, I just wanna show you a little bit more that, that can be done with our boxes uh, using background images and background colors. So uh, if I take a look at um, my files over here, uh, here I've got my index file. Uh, my CSS is inside the CSS folder and I've gone ahead and added two images. So one is a really small selfie of me, cheeky little selfie there. And one of them is a background, a, a very large background image of uh, a sunset. So uh, let's take a look at that. As you can see, it's <laughs> quite a large image. Um, the dimensions here are, you know, 2,500 pixels, so it's, it's really big. Uh, and then I have this really small image uh, of me, uh, and this is just a, a selfie that I've started using across uh, most of my social medias. Uh, you guys will probably recognize it by now, right? So let's take a look at uh, how background images work. And uh, instead of styling the paragraph, what I wanna do is I wanna style my body. Uh, this is a, gonna be a plane flying over. I hope that's not gonna be too distracting. Uh, but I wanna style my body. And uh, yeah, this is the body tag over here. Uh, so what I wanna do is this can also be treated like a box. Uh, we can give it borders and paddings and margins and so on, but I don't really wanna do that. What I do wanna do is give it a background image. So let's go background and uh, you'll see that we've got background, which is a shortcut. We've also got background image, which is one of the properties we can use uh, background uh, repeat attachment. I'm gonna explain a bunch of these, uh, but for now let's just use background image because I know I wanna work with an image. And then I'm going to add in URL and uh, open up some quotation marks within uh, these two, uh, well, parentheses or uh, brackets. And over here in between these quotation marks, I need to put in uh, the file path to my image. Now remember, my CSS file is over here, which means I need to go back one folder, and then I need to go to my image, which is called background large dot JPEG. So I'm gonna copy that name, paste that name in here. But like I said, uh, relative to where my CSS file is, because my CSS file is here, I need to go back one folder. How do I do that? Well, uh, I can say dot dot slash, or I can just go back to the root directory by using a slash symbol. So we know that the root, root directory is our ht.docs directory. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hit save, uh, come back here and hit refresh, and take a look at that. Now the background has changed. It's almost completely dark uh, because we're only getting uh, like the top corner of this image. We're only getting like this, uh, black section. Um, so we can change the size of our background image uh, using the background size property, uh, background size. And I'm going to uh, either, we can either set a pixel value for this. So I can set something like 250 pixels by 160 pixels or something like that. And that'll scale my image to only be 250 pixels by 160 pixels. Uh, so if I come back here and hit refresh, 
Um, now you can see the image has been made a lot, lot smaller, uh, but it also is doing this weird thing where it repeats. So we've got one, then the next one, then the next one, then the next one, then the next one. Uh, and the reason why it does that is because by default, background images will repeat. So there's also this uh, next uh, property called background repeat, and you can set that equal to none, right? And what that'll do is, uh, is it background repeat none or background repeat no? Maybe it's no. Come back here, oh, save. Hmm. Background repeat none no. Uh, oh, sorry, it is no repeat. Gosh, that, that one's confusing, right? Uh, so let's come back here and hit refresh. And now our background doesn't repeat. Uh, and I actually want to uh, talk about this value a little bit more uh, next. But uh, before I play around with that, let's uh, come back to background size. Because like I said, we can either do a uh, background size with pixel values, or I can set a background value of cover. Now what cover does is it makes our background image as big as the browser window is. So if I save this and come back here and hit refresh, you can see that uh, what it's done is it's made the background image fit the browser, right? And if the background or the browser gets bigger, the background image gets bigger. If the background or the browser gets smaller, the background image gets smaller. So uh, as long as I keep resizing my browser like that, you can see it keeps changing sizes. Um, so that is one really cool and neat feature about background size. Uh, now that we've talked about background size, I want to talk to you guys about uh, background repeat. So let's remove that value. Uh, and I'm gonna swap images. So right now I'm using the background large, but let's swap that to uh, use my selfie image, which is called selfie. So now it's gonna use this one. Come back here, save jump back over to the browser, hit refresh. And now you can see we're using the smaller image. So it doesn't quite fit the browser all that well and it's repeating. Uh, and this is a pretty cool image to use for uh, the background uh, repeat property. Uh, so we already know that I can set this to no repeat and the image doesn't repeat, right? Then I can also set this equal to uh, repeat X, which will repeat it along the X axis. And the X axis is the horizontal axis going across, I, I think. Uh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, so the X axis is the horizontal axis going across. And this kind of looks like uh, if you went to um, one of those photo booths maybe, and you uh, printed a picture, um, although usually those go down, right? Not across. So to get a better uh, effect of that, I could probably say repeat Y. Come back here and hit refresh. And now uh, we have the images going uh, or repeating but one below the other uh, going on the, uh, what is this? The vertical axis, right? Uh, so that is how to use the background repeat property. Then um, I also want to show you guys that we've got something uh, called background color. Uh, so you'll notice, um, let, me, let me put the other picture back in here, background dash large dot JPEG. I'm gonna take away background repeat, but I'm gonna put in background size back to cover again. So let's come back here and hit refresh. Okay, so now you can see we've got the background image here, but this text doesn't show up all that well. It's there, I mean, I can see it's there, but it's not showing up all that well. So something I could do is maybe come back over to my paragraph and change the color to red. Come back here, save that and uh, hit refresh. Uh, and so that makes the text a little bit more visible, right? But uh, instead of changing the color of the text, let's say I, I wanted to use black text. Um, so instead of changing the color of the text, I can change the color of uh, the background. So I can change the background uh, color of my paragraph 
to white, or uh, I could use the hexadecimal color of white, which is uh, hashtag FFF, as learned in a previous tutorial. Come back here, hit refresh, and uh, now you can see I've got uh, a white background on my paragraph. And I could also do that for my body. Um, if I jump back over here, I could also set a background color for my body. It would just be hidden by the image though, unfortunately. Okay, so this tutorial is getting a little bit long and there's still kind of a lot of stuff I wanna show you. Uh, so I'm going to stop the video here and then I'm going to pick it up in the next video where I'll show you guys how to use the shorthand property. I just wanna send a shout out to my sponsors at Dev Mountain. They run a coding bootcamp with courses on iOS development, UX design and web development and they can teach you everything you need to know to get a job within this field and they'll do it within 12 weeks which I think is a rather impressive timeline. So go ahead and check out their website. The link is in the video description. And if you do contact them, make sure to tell them that I sent you. Hey, thanks for staying until the end of the video. That really means a lot to me. Now, while you're still here, there are a few things that you can do to help. First of all, if you haven't already, subscribe and watch another one of my videos. And if you wanna help me make more content more often, or if you feel that my content is just worth paying a little bit of money towards, you can check me out on Patreon. You can also check me out on social media. I will leave the links next to me. So go ahead and click on something and I'll see you guys next time.